For lots of businesses, ranking using local SEO can be an absolute game changer. But it can also be quite tricky, particularly if you've got lots of different locations and you want to get all of these locations visibility in their local areas. Well, local SEO has its own set of rules and you essentially need to create a local SEO strategy for each of the locations that you want to target which can make it feel quite overwhelming. Then of course, you've got the question, do you want to rank in the map pack? Do you want to rank in the regular organic listings? Can you rank on both? Uh, yes, you can. Well, if all of this is feeling a bit overwhelming, don't worry, we've got you covered. At Exposure Ninja, we've done multi-location local SEO for a whole bunch of different clients in different spaces, including legal, retail, financial, healthcare. We know the ins and outs of this process and today we're breaking it down for you. Let's go. With local SEO, we're really thinking about two different types of ranking. And today we're gonna cover both of them. But just to illustrate how this works, I've done a search here for best local self-storage near Guildford. This is a local search. I could have also just searched for best local self-storage. And as long as I was near Guildford, I would see a similar sort of results. Now, of course, we've got the ads at the top and sometimes you'll see PPC ads at the top of the page. Sometimes you won't. Sometimes you'll see sponsored ads in the map pack. But the first type of results we see on this search page are the local listings, i.e. the map pack. So we've got a map here and then we've got some listings that come underneath that. Then underneath this, we've got the sort of the regular organic results. And these have a local skew to them as well. You can see that we're not just seeing local self-storage, we're seeing local self-storage Guildford. So we're seeing locally optimized regular web pages ranking in the organic search results. In this video, we're gonna talk about the pages first, and then we're gonna talk about how to get ranking in this map pack because if you do some of the work to get ranking with these pages, that will also help your visibility in the map pack. Cool, okay. Now the first step if you want to get ranking locally, particularly if you've got multiple locations, is to get great locally targeted pages on your site. This is a really important sign to Google and searchers that your business is relevant for each of these different locations. Now, yes, this means making lots of different pages on your site, which I know can feel like a bit of a pain, but it's definitely worth it. Now, the next question people have is, how do I possibly make pages on my site that are relevant to each of the locations? Can't I just make the same page and then switch out the location each time? Well, yes, you could, but it's actually much better if you can make them specific. Let me show you an example. So here I am on a, one of our clients' uh, sites, and you can see that we've got this page here, which is uh, targeting the phrase car accident lawyers in Texas. Now we've made the data on this page specific to Texas in order to make it more relevant. We're showing relevance to Google, but we're also making it more relevant to the visitors that are landing on this page. Now we've got a step further though, because within Texas, there are certain cities that we want to target. For example, McAllen. Now you can see we've got a similar page here that's targeting McAllen. But what we've done is we've made this page specific to McAllen by referencing particularly McAllen and Rio Grande. We've included links to data about their population. And then we've built out this huge page all about this topic in McAllen. Then of course we've included information about the business's location in this area. We'll talk a little bit more about these local citations later on. Now that's obviously a super in-depth approach. Now this business here, we helped go from three locations to eight locations by building their visibility, particularly with local SEO. And here you can see one of the location pages optimized for Eltham in South London. And you can see we've given the location. We've also shown a picture of the team in this practice as well. Now in these situations, of course, we're careful to use the location in the page copy. We're not gonna shy away from that, but we're not gonna stuff it to oblivion to make it feel unnatural. Think about if you were in this local area and you visited this page, you'd find it reassuring to see that there is a page about this local area. But it might seem a bit suspect to you if every other word was that location. And you really don't need to do that to help Google justify ranking your website in each of these locations. In this page, we've also embedded a Google map so we can show Google that this page and this location are the same. Now, it's also important if you're gonna have lots of location pages to think about the URL structure and how these are ordered on the website. Let's look at how supermarket chain Tesco does it because they've got lots of stores and they've thought about this. So if you go on the Tesco website, you'll see that there is a store locator section. Now I've just searched for stores in Nottinghamshire. 
and you can see we've got all of these different stores. Now, if you click on any of these, you go to their individual store page. These aren't particularly detailed. Um, they do have a bit of specific information, but really there's not a huge amount of specific information, but they have structured these nicely. So you can see up here in the URL, we've got tesco.com. These are in the store locator folder. And then there is a Nottingham subfolder. And then we have the URL of this specific store page. This is a nice way of doing it. And it helps Google understand the page hierarchy on your website. Okay, but there's another type of search that we need to think about. What if people aren't actually searching for your service, your city? What if they just search for your service near me? Well, here's one way of dealing with that. Fortunately or unfortunately, depending on whether you own that business, um, Google is a little bit more sophisticated than that though. When you search for service near me, Google just shows you local results. Google's not gonna show you a website that's ranking for Thai restaurant near me, even if they're miles away from your location. Luckily, we've moved beyond that. So in order to rank for these type of near me searches, all you really need to do is focus on targeting your locations in the ways that we've just talked about, and then also making sure that your Google business page is optimized, which we're gonna come on to shortly. Now, one of the biggest challenges with these type of local pages on your website is actually coming up with enough content that is unique to those locations to make it worthwhile. It's difficult enough writing a page of copy for your website. What about if you've got thousands of locations? Do you really have to go and write dedicated pages for all of these? Yes, but there are ways of doing this. Let's look at an example. So I've searched for best local self storage near Guildford. And of course we've got the map pack and then we've got the regular organic results. Now if we check out some of these, particularly big yellow self storage, they're doing a great job of these local pages. So just look at this one here. So this is for one of their stores in Guildford. They have multiple stores in Guildford. We've got reviews specific to this store. We've got the location of the store. We've got the phone number of the store. So this is this specific store. This location is formatted in a nice way which we'll come back to when we talk about citations. We can see the local store's opening hours and we can see pictures of the store. So all of this is just like the basic information that you would need to include. So what do they do to take it to the next level and to add more content to this page in order to increase its likelihood of ranking? Well, they include some specific features about the store. They embed a Google map pack. Um, we give some information about the location, but it's actually a very specific location. This isn't just, hey, this is generic. Welcome to our storage in Slyford in Guildford. They've given some information. They've actually done a really good job of writing some relatively interesting, useful content. It's not game changing. It's not world beating. You're not going to copy and paste this and send it to your friends to have a look at, but it's actually tailored to this business and it is specific. It's not just AI generated garbage. Then we've got some information about the different services they offer. And then we've got some stuff about supporting the local community. And this is kind of interesting because it's clear that they're actually working with local organizations in this space and they're using that stuff here, which I really, really like. These are all local entities, which they are probably supporting with donations. And I would expect that they've got some sort of link or local citation as a result, which is gonna help their ranking. So that's super smart as well as obviously being a nice thing to do. Then we've got some more local specific reviews. Now we'll see that this website is actually ranking two different pages for this search. If we scroll down a bit, you can see we've got this um, sort of main category page for all of their stores in Guildford. And you can see we've got this citywide page, which then lists both the store that we've just looked at, but also one of their other ones. And again, they include some specific information about the local area. Another way of doing this is to write pages that specifically target best X in location. As this coffee roasting company Bridge has done, where they've written this post, the five best coffee roasters in Wales, 2024. Now, in this case, this business offers wholesale supplies. So they may be supplying some of these businesses. We don't really know. But the point here is that if you wanted to create a guide like this and rank yourself at the top and include some of your competitors further down, that could be a good way to get visibility for this type of search. Now, if you're doing this type of work, it's a good idea to start with some good old fashioned competitor research. So what we do is we put your location and your service into Google and have a look and see how well your competitors are optimizing for these types of phrases. So let's say that we are working with a weight loss clinic chain and we wanted to 
increase visibility in their Chelsea uh, clinic. What we might do is search for weight loss clinic Chelsea London. And we're then gonna have a look at the types of pages that are ranking. So here I can see that we've got the Kensington and Chelsea Weight Management Service. This is a very high authority domain from the NHS. So it might be tricky to beat that, but nevertheless, we'd have a good go. We then got the local listings. We'll come back to those in just a minute. And then we've got these regular pages. Now, some of these are one clinic businesses i.e., just based in chelsea but some of them are larger chains or directories for example this is a directory this is a directory um this is a uh, this is a small chain but the page that's ranking is not a specific location targeted page so if we wanted to compete in a search like this building out location specific targeted pages would make a lot of sense because we can see that google is struggling to rank actual clinics and even for some of them that it is ranking they're not location targeted pages so further optimization to be done here all right let's talk about this google local map pack how do we get visibility in here this is the main battleground for most local businesses because it shows your business it shows your location and it is a very enticing listing that can get people clicking and get people coming onto your website. Now, of course, in order to do this, you need a Google business page. If you have a Google business page, you get all sorts of useful insights, such as how many people have searched for you or seen your page or clicked on your phone number and stuff like that. Now, I'm not gonna take you through the process of setting up a Google business page. You are a functional adult. You can go to your Google business page and you can set it up and you can fill in all the details. What I will say though, is it's really important important to fill in as much of your profile as you possibly can. Don't just let the little ticker say, oh yes, you filled in everything. Do as much as you can, including things like adding updates, these are like posts that you can add to your page and can give Google extra context about the relevance and quality of your business, as well as showing potential searches that you are up to date and that this page is alive. Now, of course, one of the most important aspects of a Google business page is, and by the way, if you're watching this thinking, I need help with my digital marketing, I need help with my local SEO, my local visibility, ninjas, help me. Well, the good news is that we have a free service which can help give you a bit of a kickstart. It's called the Free Website and Marketing Review. All you need to do is go to exposureninja.com forward slash review, fill in a bit of information about your business, and we'll then do some research. We'll have a look at where you're ranking locally at the moment. We'll have a look at what your competitors are doing to outrank you. We'll also have a look at things like your paid ad channels, your website performance, and your social media. We'll then wrap all of our insight into a 15 to 20 minute video, which we send to you free of charge by email usually within three to five working days and if you're considering expanding locally regionally or even nationally then we are a great option for this by the way not everyone who requests their free review is eligible so you need to fill in the form on exposureninja.com forward slash review to check if you're eligible if you're not eligible don't worry we're going to send you some awesome stuff anyway but go to exposureninja.com forward slash review to go and request your free review today now, of course, one of the most important aspects of a Google business page is the reviews. These are not only a great way of building credibility when people see your business listed in the search results, but they're also a fantastic way to show Google that your business is excellent, popular, and that people love it. Now, some in the world of SEO claim that review count, review quality, and sentiment impact local SEO. We haven't seen any proof of this, but if you think about it, a business that has a higher review count, and if that review count is higher quality, i.e. you've got more stars in your average review rating, you're likely to get more clicks from searches. And we do know that Google feeds click-through rate in as one of its ranking factors. So it makes sense that if you have more reviews, you get more clicks and that's gonna help your ranking. So it's a really good thing to do. Of course, the best way to get reviews is to ask for them. If you just hope that people are gonna land on your Google page and give you a review, you don't really have a strategy. And of course, if you've got multiple locations, you need to ask customers for each location to leave reviews on that location's page. So here's how you do it. So you log in to your Google business page, and if you're logged into your Google business page, you'll see a screen like this. All you need to do is go down to ask for reviews, and what's gonna happen is you're gonna get this like short link that you can use. Now this link is for this location. So if you've got multiple locations, you'll need to choose the right location. You'll need to get a different link for each of the locations that you've set up. And what you're then gonna to want to do is you're gonna to want to automate this because there's no way that you or someone in your team needs to be 
manually sending out review links for each of your different locations to every single customer. The clients that we work with who do best on this have automated email sequences that we've set up where once they've done business with someone, we send them the link for that location so they can quite easily click, go back to the page and leave them a review. The reason this needs to be automated is that you might only get a 10% conversion rate on a review request. And if you wanna get hundreds of reviews to make your business look really popular, you're gonna to need to be sending out thousands of these review requests and that's not something that anybody wants to be doing manually. Now, if you're doing any sort of volume at all, you're gonna get bad reviews. That's just a fact of life. Getting bad reviews removed from Google is incredibly difficult, even if they're fake, done by competitors, or just done by people that want to hurt you. So the best advice here is to make sure that you're responding to each review that you get, both positive and negative. If you get negative reviews, respond calmly. If you got something wrong, apologize for it. If there was a misunderstanding from the customer's perspective, make sure that you explain that and offer to resolve it. It's also against Google's guidelines to incentivize people to leave reviews. I could see what you were thinking there. Okay, let's talk about NAPs or name, address, phone numbers, also known as citations. In the world of regular SEO, i.e. trying to get your website ranked in the organic listings here, one of the measures that Google uses of a website's authority is links, inbound links, so links from other websites. Now, when we're optimizing for maps, links still do have an impact, but there is another type of recommendation that are specific to maps called citations or these NAPs. And how this works is Google looks for instances of your name, address, and phone number being referenced online. If it sees a local business being referenced in this way lots of times, there is an assumption there that this is a popular and authoritative business. So that's usually going to help increase visibility in maps. So how do you get these NAP citations? Well, there's a few different ways. Firstly, of course, you've got these NAPs on your website. You should be including your business's name, address, and phone number on your website. And try to include this in a standardized form. Really important with NAPs is that they always take the same form because Google needs to see that form replicated on lots of different websites. So that's the first way, but you can also get your business's NAP referenced on other local sites. There's a few ways of doing this. Now, firstly, you've got sort of generic local directories. In the UK, we've got things like Yale, local directory magazine, but these are gonna be different in every country. Now, as well as the decent ones, there are, to be completely honest, loads of really trash local directories, which aren't ever gonna get ranking. They're never gonna to contribute to any ranking. So the best thing to do, honestly, is just search local directories on Google, because then you're gonna see the local directories that actually have the most authority. These are gonna be the ones that you're gonna to want to get featured in. Now, a bunch of these local directories have a business model that is basically get people signed up on the local directory and then try and sell them added SEO benefits. My advice is to ignore all of these. You don't need to pay for any premium listings in local directories unless you know that the traffic coming to that directory is super high quality and you really, really want to get featured, then hey, maybe it's up to you. But from an SEO perspective, you don't need to pay for any additional features. Local directory listings are really simple and straightforward to get added. So just smash through as many as you can and then move on to the next task. Now, there are some other industry specific types of directories. For example, let's say that you're a lawyer in LA. If you just search for Los Angeles lawyer directories, you're going to see a whole bunch of directories size that's specific to your industry and potentially your location as well. So you can also get listed in these. And again, there's going to be a similar sort of thing here where a bunch of them are going to try and sell you stuff. If you look at it and you're like, yeah, the visibility, the traffic from this is going to make sense for me. Great. But don't do it from an SEO perspective. It's almost never worth paying for these add-ons. Okay. So what if you've got multiple locations? Do you need separate Google business pages for each location? Going back to our example with a client regain hearing, we help them grow from three locations to eight locations. And guess what? every single one of those locations has its own Google business page. They have separate reviews for each one. They have separate NAPs for each one. So each one has its own set of local directory listings. Each one has its own page. 
really important that you do this for each one. And this is actually a great strategy if you're expanding your business into lots of different areas. One of the things that we do when we're working with a client that is expanding into new areas and opening new branches is we'll get these Google business pages set up nice and early. As soon as the office location is confirmed, we'll build a page on their website and we'll get the local directory listings and we'll get the Google business page set up nice and early. This means that by the time that office is opening, they've already got some visibility in the local area. And in some cases, they're already getting inquiries from that local area so the team can get straight to servicing the local community. Now, it's also a good idea to do link building for each of your locations. And usually you'll be building the links to the location pages on your website. So there are a whole bunch of different ways to do this. Of course, every different location has its own local magazines, local news sites that you can get features in and that you can do link outreach to just as you would with any business that you're doing a link building campaign for. There are some other specific examples that can work for local businesses though, including things like finding local universities and organizations. Here we're looking at one on the University of Leeds website and you can see that they've got a page all about how to drive to the university and some bright car rental services have managed to get their websites listed on this page knowing that this is a high authority domain and these links are likely going to be very helpful to them. Now they would have got extra bonus points if they'd have linked to the Leeds location page, but hey, at least they're trying. Now one more thing to mention, of course, is how Google is changing, and in particular the rollout of its new AI-powered search engine, SGE. SGE is a completely different type of search result. So here's a search for best private hospitals in New York City. You can see we've got an organic result here. We've got some location pages here in the map pack. Then we've got the regular organic results. But right at the top of this page, we've got a huge SGE section. This is their AI powered search results. So how do you get ranking in here? Well, we've got videos specifically on how to get ranked in, for example, the carousel section in SGE, as well as to how to get featured in some of these drop down answers. But what you'll notice most of the time with local SGE results is they're actually just pulling from the regular map pack. For example, I can see here that the top three ranking sites in the map pack are this one, East Side, one Brooklyn, and lo and behold, Ancien, East Side, one Brooklyn. These results are the same. So at the moment, if you want to get ranked in the SGE map pack, you just have to get ranked in the regular map pack. And if you want to get ranked in the carousel, then you need to watch our video on how to get ranked using SGE. All right, so if this video has left you hungry for more local SEO tips, then check out this video, which breaks down one of our award-winning case studies where we've helped a client generate 146% increase in local leads using local SEO. Until next time, see you soon.